Hi guys, welcome again to the third episode in creating a third person controller. Last week we finished up our spring arms and today we're going to start working on fine tuning some of the other controls that we have planned for our controller. This includes the ability to change the side we view the character from. And we're going to do that using tweens. Quick reminder, like and subscribe if you're learning something new. Want the full course right now? Join my Patreon or become a channel member to access everything immediately. Prefer to pay once? The complete course is on Udemy with lifetime access. Links below, now let's get into it. Okay, so we are getting along pretty well. We've got a character here with a basic third person camera and a very basic move set. And now our camera doesn't clip through the walls, which is great, but there's a lot our camera doesn't do, right? And being a third person game, that camera needs to have a lot of different actions that it can take on. And so we're gonna look at that in the next couple of episodes. Uh, the first thing that we're going to look at is switching sides. So the camera right now is right hand aligned. Um, and often in third person shooters, you have the option to change that. So we'll look at giving us the ability to switch uh, the alignment of the camera. And we'll also look at aiming and we'll look at sprinting. And we're going to write all of this in a way that uh, later on, these actions can be controlled by a different object or node in the scene, which will most likely be the weapon manager for the aiming and the state machine for the sprinting. And we're going to look at the way that you can set that up so that you can do it. And then we'll explore a couple of options in terms of quality of life. Um, we're going to be doing this all with tweens. Um, if you guys don't know me, I'm a big fan of using tweens for these kinds of things. It allows you to sort of set those parameters in the inspector here, which makes it so that you can dynamically adjust them whenever you're designing your character. So you don't need to add an animation player. We can just uh, set out the parameters for the inspector and then just it'll be animated to those points. Um, and then we'll look at how you can control that and the different things that you can do with the tween. Without talking about it for too much further, let's get into it. So the first thing we're looking at is alignment, right? And the very first thing that we're going to need to get access to is the thing that we're going to tween, right? So we need to set up a new export variable here, and it's going to be for the edge spring arm, right? And uh, it'll be a spring arm 3D, right? We'll come back over into the inspector and we'll click assign and we'll assign the edge spring arm to the edge spring arm. And then we'll have that. And the only other thing we need for this is a tween variable. Um, so we'll call this the camera tween. We're only gonna need one and it'll be of type tween. So the, the thing with tweens is you don't wanna be having multiple tweens tweening the same property. So we need to make sure that there's only one tween ever created for the camera. Um, I've explored a couple of different ways to do this with uh, not keeping track of the tween, um, keeping uh, way too much track of the tween, and it all seems to uh, work out no matter which way you do it. Um, I've tried to structure this so that we do it in the simplest way possible, but while also still preserving the behavior of the camera. There's a lot in the documentation about what you can do with it, but it's an object that you can use for dynamic animations. So it requires numerical properties to be interpolated over a range of values, um, and it's more suited than the animation player where you don't know the final value in advance. Of course, we, we kind of will know the final value in advance, but it'll allow us to adjust those on the fly very easily. And of course, we can probably set up some situations where that changes, you know what I'm saying? So if you wanted to have something that adjusted the aiming, for example, like an add-on for your weapon, a tween would be really good for that because you can manipulate the way the aim behaves with the tween. So um, I'll just show you the example here. So basically here in the documentation, we've got the, uh, the tween. You should avoid using uh, more than one tween per object property. Um, if two or more tweens animate one property at the same time, the last one will create, last one created will take priority and assign the final value. So um, if you want to interrupt and restart an animation, consider assigning the tween to a variable. So that's what we're going to do because we're going to be tweening the same variables most of the time. Uh, we're going to interrupt and tween to different positions depending on what we're actually tweeting to. So I, that's what I'm doing here. And so we'll need to create a couple of functions for this. Okay, so we'll also need to set up some input. So we'll go into the project settings and we'll go to the input map. And we're gonna create one called uh, swap camera alignment. And I'm just gonna set that to tab. And this is one of those inputs where it could be more um, obscure, it could be in a setting, 
it's really up to you how you want to expose it. But for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to make it something that's easy for me to access on the keyboard. Um, and so we've set that input up. And so what we can do is over in this input function where we're doing most of our work is we can say if, if event that is action pressed and we can just come down here to swap camera alignment and then we can call some function that we haven't written yet. So there's two functions that I want to create. Um, the first one's going to be called, uh, first one's going to be called swap camera alignment and it's not going to take any variables but it's going to return void basically what we're going to do is we're just going to get the new position which is going to be something really simple um, we'll type new pause and it's going to be a type float and basically what we're going to do is flip the spring arm length so we're going to go to the edge spring arm dot spring length and we're just going to put a minus in front of that and that'll essentially just flip whatever that value is. So it doesn't matter what you've set it to in the inspector, it's always just gonna be directly mirrored in this function. And then we just need to tween to that new position. So actually gonna create a new function called set rear spring arm position. And it's going to take a position, which will be a float. And it'll also take a speed, which is also a float. And it won't return anything, which will be void. And essentially this is where we're going to tween. So what we'll do is we'll say if camera tween, then camera tween dot kill, and that'll basically invalidate the tween if it exists. And then we are just going to have to create a tween. So we can say camera tween equals uh, get tree dot create tween, right? And so that'll create the tween. Okay. And then we can go uh, camera tween dot tween property, right? And the property is going to be First, it takes an object, which is the uh, edge spring arm, right? And then it wants a node path, which is in the form of a string name. So this will just be the string form of the node path that you want to find. So we'll go with spring length. Now, if you're ever unsure about what that should be, you can always just hover your mouse over any of the variables in the inspector and it'll say property spring length. And so that's just what you need to type. Um, I don't think you can copy property path like that if you as well, so you paste that in. Um, I don't know, copy property path, rotation. Yeah, so you can see that's pretty good. The thing with tweens, just so you know, uh, with rotation, you can actually also do like, uh, like that and just do the X value as well if you wanted to. Um, so it's pretty powerful in terms of what it can do. Okay, the final value is going to be the position that we pass in. And then the duration is the speed we pass it. All right. So we're good to go here. Now we just need to call this and uh, it's pretty straightforward. So we just go set rear spring arm position. Uh, we pass in the position, which is new position. And then we pass in the speed. Uh, we don't have a speed. I'm going to set it to like 0.2. Um, but I think we should create a variable for that. So I'll just say uh, var, um, camera alignment speed. Be a float and it'll be equal to 0 0.2. Uh, this, um, I think, to be honest, will make it an export variable. Sorry about that. So that you can set it in the inspector. That's the entire point of this exercise, isn't it? So, camera alignment speed, you can set it up there and it will change how fast it goes. Um, so, camera alignment speed. All right. So, now we just need to say, if event dot is action press swap camera alignment to swap camera alignment. Now, I don't know about having them the same. It doesn't throw a conflict here. Um, I might consider changing that, but let's just run it. And you can see that it moves across pretty well, to be honest. And you can sort of spam this number and see, this is the problem with tweens. You eventually get to the center. Uh, and so that's, kind of a bit of an issue it just eventually goes to zero because when you interrupt it the position that it has is its final position so if i interrupt this then that's the new final position and so you can start to see where you might run into trouble so one way that we can prevent that is obviously storing the original starting point in a variable so what i can do here is actually at the bottom where where typically you would store an on ready variable so we go on ready var uh, default spring arm length, default 
uh, rear, sorry, not rear, edge, spring arm, length. And that's a float, and it will be equal to the edge spring arm, never shows up in this, dot spring length. All right, and so now we know what the default spring length is. We can bring that down to the calculation for the new pause. Now, how do we know which way? Because we can flip, we can go new pause equals default and the negative, but it's always going to be um, the negative, right? Like, because this doesn't change. So if we set new pause, we could, uh, we could set default spring arm to be the inverse of that and then pass that in realistically i think that would work yeah and so then that just flips and you don't run into that issue anymore the other way that other way we can do it is we can multiply it by the sign this is something that we're going to do later of the default spring arm, sorry, not default spring arm. We can multiply it by the inverse sine of the edge spring arm dot spring length. And so that will return a number between uh, zero, one, and negative one, depending on its position. Theoretically, uh, this will work, but depending on its position in the, <laughs> in its like movement, you could potentially get it to come back into center. I think I haven't, obviously you would need really good timing for it to be like actually zero at the time. Perhaps, I don't know, <laughs> but I'm gonna leave it like that because I actually wanna pre preserve the default spring arm length uh, rather than actually setting it to be a different value. Um, but yeah, for now, I think either is fine. Okay, so that is the first tween that we're adding to this. Um, it's very simple, very straightforward. You can see that if we wanted to change this, so we can come back to the camera and we can go camera alignment speed. If we wanted to make this really slow, I can make it one second. Maybe I'll be able to get the center with this. Um, you can see that it moves a lot slower. <laughs> and and then what you can see is if I spam that button until it moves to the other side, it's not actually gonna move back. And I really believe that you could actually get um, <laughs> directly in the center and uh, cause a problem with that sign function. But we're gonna address that later. So, so yeah, I'll change this back to point two and we'll see you in the next episode where we're gonna add some more tweens and do some more fun stuff with them. All right, guys, I hope you found this episode helpful. In the next episode, we're gonna make it so that when we press a button, our camera will zoom in like we're aiming a weapon. If you're finding this series helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want immediate access to every single episode, you can join the channel as a member or jump onto the Patreon. Other than that, guys, we'll see you guys next week.